Some analysis and perspective on all these stories from House Oversight Committee Chairman Trey Gowdy of South Carolina joins us here in studio. Thanks for being here. Yes, sir. Well, let's start with uh, James' uh, story about uh, this FBI official who was kicked off the Mueller investigation. How serious do you think this is, knowing what you know about it now? I think from a perception standpoint, it's incredibly serious. He was one of the agents of Secretary Clinton's investigation. He was on Mueller's special counsel. He is anti-Trump, perhaps pro-Clinton text. People have the right to assume the people that are investigating them are objective and have not already made up their minds. That's why we need to see the text and we need to interview this special agent. But the bureaus had a really bad last 18 months. And, and, and this, um, this makes it worse, frankly. There was a 5 p.m. deadline by Chairman Nunes of, uh, for the DOJ and FBI to produce all subpoenaed documents uh, to uh, about the Fusion GPS dossier that came and went. It did not, was not filled. There was a, a lot of stonewalling that even Speaker Ryan has talked about. So do you think the chairman is going to be pre proceeding with a, a contempt of Congress? Um, I think what we want are the documents and not the drama. When, when you go to a floor fight on contempt of Congress, it's inherently political. And what we really want is just the information and access to the witnesses. We, we have an investigation that we want to conclude quickly. Um, but the, you're right, the speaker has, has weighed in, which is, which is pretty unprecedented. If the Department of Justice or the Bureau has a legitimate reason for withholding that information, and the only legitimate reason I can think of is it's part of an ongoing probe. If that's what it is, they need to make that very clear. Otherwise, they need to produce the information. Um, and if they don't, I, I don't want to go contempt. I want the information. I, I don't want the drama of a floor fight. But, but if we have a floor fight, it'll be because the department picked one, not us. Well, we know there's an Office of Inspector General investigation into this, right? Yeah, Michael Horowitz is the Inspector General. I talked to him over the weekend. He is exactly what we want to think the FBI is. He's a referee. He's a straight shooter. I've known him for four years. I think he's the one who uncovered these texts, and, and I actually have full confidence that he's going to get to the bottom so of it. So if Stroke uh, changed the language as is being reported in the, the Clinton situation for Director Comey, from grossly negligent to extremely careless. Is that perhaps alone grounds to reopen that case? Well, I don't think they need any grounds to reopen it. I mean, the, the, the FBI head was picked by Trump. The DOJ head was picked by Trump. Rod Rosenstein was picked by Trump. So all of the old actors are gone now. They, they don't need a reason. There's no statute of limitations. They, they don't need permission to reopen something. I do find it interesting the FBI changed the words grossly negligent, which is exactly what's in the statute, to extremely careless, which is a synonym. It's just not what's in the statute. Another reason we got to get this agent in and then Comey in to understand the decision making back in 2016. All right, take a listen, uh, Senator Mark Warner and Senator Dianne Feinstein over the weekend. This president has been obsessed with this investigation, always saying there's nothing there, but each week another shoe drops. Now the president is somehow saying <clears throat> he didn't, he, he fired Flynn because he. Uh, knew Flynn was lying to Pence. Well, if he knew that then, why didn't he act on it earlier? It raises a whole series of additional questions. What we're beginning to see is the putting together of a case of obstruction of justice. Obstruction of justice. That is the going case up on Capitol Hill being talked about. Um, only because the collusion case hasn't been made. I mean, keep in mind, so two of these folks that you just show they were talking about collusion this time six months ago but there's no evidence of that so now they pivoted to obstruction of justice it's an interesting legal argument what about the legal argument alan dershowitz says you can't make it against the president other people say they point to nixon and clinton and the political case that's made an impeachment where, where are you on the would, obstruction of justice i would say two things i think the chief executive can obstruct justice i, I would disagree with professor Turkowitz. i just think it's really really hard when you have full pardon power plenary pardon power power and you are the chief executive and can direct what is and is not investigated. Also, Brett, keep in mind, this is the same president who said he liked Bill and Hillary Clinton and didn't want to see anything bad happen to them. Is that obstruction of justice? What, are the Democrats complaining that he weighed in and, 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 and tried to influence a decision with respect to them? I wish he'd stay off Twitter. I, I really do. I wish he'd quit commenting on ongoing probes. But, but the obstruction of justice, remember, that started being discussed when Comey had these memos that, that, that he said he, he, he made. 
I've read the memos. I've read every one of Comey's memos. They would be defense exhibit A in an obstruction of justice case, not prosecution exhibit, defense exhibit A. If Comey felt obstructed, he did a masterful job of keeping it out of any of his memos. Last thing, how does the FBI go from assessing that Flynn made a mistake to deliberately lying to the FBI in a plea agreement, something that Michael Flynn agrees to? One of two things, either they were wrong <laughs> when they thought that he just simply made a mistake. Um, uh, uh, keep in mind, he knows whether or not he was lying, and it may be that they thought he wasn't, but he raised his hand and said, yes, I was. Or it may have been they said, look, we're going to not investigate this other stuff, but we need you to, to make a 1001 plea, and you need to plead to making a false statement. I can tell you, Brett, when all you got is a false statement to a federal law enforcement officer, you ain't got much. Um, that's usually the, 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 the very bottom of the barrel of what you make people plead to. It's no prison time associated, and you have made that witness, frankly, incredible in front of a jury because they've already admitted to lying. So um, it's uh, I, I, either he knew he was lying and the Bureau didn't, or they have worked something out um, in lieu of other charges. Is this going to last a long time, do you think, in your assessment, looking where we are right now? I think the Democrats want it to last until the next election cycle, and it's our job to do a thorough job, but also not let it unnecessarily be prolonged. I continue to think Robert Mueller is, is our fellow citizens best hope for finding all what really happened. Congressional investigations don't have a reputation of being very good. Do you think that there's a possibility that another special counsel is somehow going to be requested? You know, Brett, I, I'm in a small universe of people that doesn't think we need one. I got friends on the other side, but 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 the, the folks running the Department of Justice now aren't the ones who ran it under President Obama. The, these are Trump people. So special counsel just means we either don't think you can do your job and the women and men that we paid millions of dollars to to, to run the DOJ. So we're going to find somebody who's not part of DOJ and give them a bunch of FBI agents. And oh, by the way, the FBI's got some issues right now. It, special counsel is not a panacea. What we need is a serious investigation. Who does it is immaterial to me. Congressman, thanks for the time. Yes, sir. Thank you.